While the concept of mixed migration has been used in academic and policy circles since the 1990s, the surge in migration across the Mediterranean to Europe since 2010 put mixed migration high on the global agenda. Addressing large and complex flows of migrants became both a key political and policy challenge. In their efforts to respond, governments and humanitarian actors sought research and data that could help explain the causes, dynamics and conditions of mixed migratory movements towards Europe. Hello and welcome to this podcast series where we speak to scholars on mixed migration issues in the North Africa region. The Mixed Migration Hub partnered with the American University in Cairo's Center for Migration and Refugee Studies to establish the network of scholars on mixed migration in North Africa. The new network acts as a knowledge platform on mixed migration and aims to contribute to enhancing national migration policies and frameworks in a sustainable and humane manner along the North African migration route. In today's podcast, we will speak to Dr. Sara Sode, adjunct professor at the American University in Cairo Center for Migration and Refugee Studies, on her policy brief about the role of the network of scholars on mixed migration in North Africa. Hello, Dr. Sara. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Let us start with the first question. What are some of the state-driven nation efforts to improve knowledge on migration in North Africa? Well, the commitment to the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration, GCM, has been reflected in the first regional review in 2021 in the Arab region by various country submissions. As you know, the first GCM objective being concerned with data as the basis for evidence-based policies certainly shows the importance of enhancing data to improve migration governance. At a quick glance over the national efforts in Algeria, Egypt, Libya, Morocco, Sudan, Tunisia, we will find out that key countries in North Africa have worked on their data infrastructure when it comes to migration, such as establishing data units on migration, um, conducting national surveys, and working towards other national efforts. Speaking of the national efforts that have been exerted so far, would you tell us more about the research policy relations that exist in the region and what are its implications on the research agenda? Well, examining the production of knowledge on migration in the North Africa region, one tends to notice that it has been primarily driven by global interest and global debates on mixed migration from the perspective of destination countries. Also, a review of publications concerned with migration in the last decade reflect a separation between research produced by policymakers and research produced by practitioners and academics. Research produced on the national level has tended to be more descriptive with less in-depth analysis of the migration framework on the ground, whereas research produced by academics and practitioners have often been regarded by policymakers as being deprived of evidence and not fitting the national priorities or agendas due to the lack of access to national sources of information to validate data. Without adequate coordination with apparatuses concerned with national research in the region, researchers find themselves in a difficult position to justify priority areas, often not seen as priorities by states in the region. I believe the concept of evidence-based policies, despite its frequent usage, is quite abstract and does not provide enough evidence of the tools used in the policy-making processes, reflecting a rather symbolic approach. We also tend to talk about policy and research as interdependent, but the reality, particularly in this region, is that research has been affected by policy more than the other way around. Thank you very much, and I believe this has been uh, proven true. Uh, So if we go now um, to speak about the network of scholars on mixed migration, what does the network, uh, how does the network fit um, in this context and what uh, role should it play? What is quite interesting to observe is the limited regional or bilateral cooperation between countries in the region on migration data. The mixed migration academic network is multidisciplinary in nature, encompassing scholars from different disciplines. In its first phase, where where I had the pleasure to act as its secretariat, the network has included academics from the region of North Africa who have supported the dissemination of knowledge through key policy papers covering a wide array of topics. Such topics included the conceptualization of mixed migration and the implications of such conceptualization, as well as the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on migrants in the region. And also, papers covered the EU border externalization policies in North Africa, 
And finally, the role of academia in knowledge production on mixed migration. The papers were presented to a wide audience of multi-stakeholders to steer discussions on migration policy in the region. Thank you very much for, for this overview of the network's role. Can we also expand uh, on how the network will serve migration and migration management in the region? Well, in its current second phase and through regular policy outputs, dialogues and capacity building activities, and as an autonomous and critical voice from the region, the network can act as a very useful vehicle of knowledge transformation on migration. It can support in promoting knowledge on migration in the region through initiating and continuing policy dialogues on key trends and protection needs, not only along the routes, but equally among existing migrant groups hosted by countries in the region. This will ensure adequate dissemination and joint ownership of knowledge on migration. It will also support in adequate participation in discussing national priorities to ensure that research funded by international entities feeds into the national context and is mindful of it. The network has a vital role to play, acting as an interlocutor of knowledge and creating the interlinkages between academia, policy and practice. Thanks a lot, Dr. Tara, for your time and your valuable insights. This brings us to the end of this podcast. Thank you very much, Amira. My absolute pleasure.